Hello, Edu Magicians. Welcome to the Edu Magic Podcast with your host, Dr. Sam Fesich. Dr. Sam is a professor of education, author of Edu Magic, and a pumpkin spice latte fan. This podcast is designed for pre service teachers. Remember, friends, teaching doesn't begin at graduation, but during that first class at 8 a.m. Let's get this party started. Hi, I'm Gabriel Carrillo from the EdTech Bytes Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hey, Edgy Magicians, it's Sam. And before we start into this episode, I want to share with you about an amazing resource. It's called the Educator Candidate Member Portal. AAEE provides you with resources such as virtual job fairs, a job board, interview tips and prep, resume building, webinars. You can even get a copy of the Job Search Handbook digitally. So head on over to aaee.org and create your free Educator Candidate member account today. All right, friends, welcome back to another episode of the Edgy Magic Podcast. My name is Dr. Sam Festich, and today I have Andrea Fitzgerald, but you might know her as over on Instagram, yeah. Mental Fitness. And she and I met over on Instagram, I'd say around the beginning of summer, because she started posting some cool stuff for new teachers. I'm like, hey, I got to check this out. So <laughs> Fitz, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. I'm so excited. I know we've been talking about it for a while. So I'm hyped to be here. Thanks so much. I'm digging Yay! what you have going over there too. Yes, I am super excited to have you. I love the energy. So we are starting a new school year. And before we even get into all of that, because that's a whole conversation, I would love for you to share your teaching journey. What inspired you to become an educator? Where has your journey led you? And what are you doing today? Okay, so let, let's just be clear. I did not start teaching for children. <laughs> you know, most people are like, they want to make an impact on the world. No, I started teaching because I wanted to be a PE teacher to wear sweatpants every day. Yes, <laughs> I did read that. I was like, that is so honest. I love it. I've been working in the NBA when I played basketball my entire life. So I was like, oh, what can I do? I still do sports but I want to wear sweats every day. So I was like, oh, I'll be a PE teacher. Well, that didn't work out. So I became a math teacher. And I was just like, okay, let me go in here and get this check. I'm just going to teach this math because I've been pretty good at it. And it was just a whole lot more than I ever could have expected. I recognized, like, I had some challenges my first year, like stressed out. I remember sitting on my couch. That's literally why I had Rookie Recess Sunday, because every Sunday night, I used to be stressed out on the couch. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah, because, I, like, I couldn't manage my class, and I, and I didn't understand the power of relationships and just some of the soft skills that were required to be um, an effective teacher. And so my first year, I was stressed out. My first, And then from there, I started to see that, that it was really about the relationships. It's like, yeah, I'm kind of teaching math, but essentially it's about empowering kids to believe in themselves. Because I came from like a very different background from the students that I served. And I was just like, oh, these kids don't care. They don't want to do da 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 da. <laughs> and really, I had a lot of biases. And as I, as I started to evolve and become more self aware, and start like exploring those within myself I became a much better teacher and the results show like I was better able to like connect to kids but essentially what I learned is like without relationships you're not teaching anything you know yes. <laughs> you are not yes. teaching anything without relationships and culture and things like that and so when I started to discover that and un uncover that I said you know teaching was really a gift for me because they taught me compassion for someone else beside myself and so I did that for about six or seven years. And from there, I became like a math coach and just supporting teachers around around math and the, the common core standards. So yeah, but that, I mean, that's essentially what I, and I've been doing that for the past five years, but I also have my, my own company, Mental Fitness, where we focus on several buckets like math math tutoring, also new teacher support, and also like math consulting and, and speaking as well. So a variety of things, but really centered about around building the self-efficacy 
of people mm -hmm. through math or through whatever thing, because this is the thing. When we do hard things, the next question we ask ourselves is, boom, what else can I do? And that's, that's right. the whole thing. Like, and, and, you know, I overcame that hard thing of teaching. There's been several things that I've done that have been really challenging, but every time I say, Oh, I did that. What else can I do? And that's really what I, what I hope to do with just anyone that I touch. It's just I love how you say, okay, I did that. Now what's next? What's next on my list? And I know you have a book coming out. We're going to be talking about that in just a few moments. And you're super passionate about supporting those new teachers, beginning teachers. Maybe they just graduated in May and they're starting their first job. Now this school year looks totally different than any other that we've encountered. So what kind of tips and strategies do you have for new teachers entering not only their first year, but their first year during a pandemic? That first year alone is just mind blowing. What tips do you have for them as they start out their new career? Well, I mean, I think some of the same things are still, they're still relevant, right? Like, having a structure like you know just like even in the in the virtual space it's it's just it's a it's a school without walls it's it's a classroom without walls but i think some of the same things are still relevant i think that even more i think the relational piece is even more important now right, right? like essential it's like um why am i going to get on the computer with you doc when i can <laughs> watch espn for the next hour you know right Right. And so I would say, you know, essentially, I would say just just bring your full authentic self to this thing because kids can't learn if they don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's it's really like that connection piece. And like they say, people don't buy products; they buy people. I yes. may not, I may not like math, but you know what? I love you, Miss Fitzgerald. <laughs> so I'm gonna log on to look at you. But I mean, I think that's the first place to start is that connecting piece because connection and curriculum. But you know, the other part is, hey, you still got to be able to teach like your hair on fire now. I mean, like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Still, yes. I mean, this is not fuzzy wuzzies all day. I mean, you still there's like the technical mastery, like the skills of teaching are still important, but it's also like setting up the structures around around the virtual space that can make that happen. So like those that accountability, you know, those mm -hmm. things are are still relevant. You know, like what's my run of show? When I'm on if am I gonna be like when we're together, this is how we're gonna roll. The first five minutes, I'm gonna do this, the next ten minutes. Like it's so consistent, yeah. just like Chick-fil-A. And just <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Like it's, it's I mean, those things are still relevant. Consistency. I guess to just just nail it down to the, I call them the four C's. Still, still the same. Being consistent. Showing that you are credible, you know your stuff, you're prepared, you have like an outline of how things are going to go, you have contingency plans in place, um, confidence, you know, showing, you know, yes. and especially on the virtual space, like you really have to bring that YouTube to teach. That's what yes. I say. Like, you really yes. got to, you know, you got to sell yourself a little bit. And then, so what's it, credibility, confidence, connection. I forgot the other one. I forgot the other seat, but can we go, can we go to confidence sure. as a new teacher? I, I think sometimes it's easy to kind of fake it till we make it type thing. Like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And you get onto you're like, Oh my gosh, everybody's yeah. looking at me. I remember having that moment. I don't know if you had that moment, yeah. but I remember having this moment. I'm a first year teacher standing in my classroom. My students are looking at me. I'm like, oh, Okay, where's the teacher? Oh, wait, right. that's me. Uh oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you have that moment? It's yeah. the weirdest moment. Heck yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. So I mean, how do we how do we promote that confidence and how do we help support our new teachers with that confidence, you know, to instill instill that confidence within them? I would say the first place is self awareness. I may not be like everyone else, but I'm me. You know, I think that has been, that was invaluable for me because when I stopped trying to think that I had to be a certain way, there's no perfect answer. I think that's, yes. that's the first place. Like there's no perfect answer, but giving yourself permission to be messy and own that you're going to mess up, you know, like just because you mess up, that's not going to make you any less of who you are and less ineffective. It's called being a human being. Yeah. But I think being self-aware and knowing my strengths and also like what places I needed to grow in kind of that helped me be that's helped me become a lot more confident because I'm not trying to be anyone other than who I am you know what I mean mm -hmm. you just just show up that's it yeah. like you are in the arena that's it you know it's not going to be perfect and it's it's your choice like this is your room you like you have the autonomy it's on you you have the choice it's it's oh, no one yeah. else 
you know, it's your decision. And I know that's like really scary because I think that as kids, we have someone telling us what to do all the time. And I know that was kind of how I grew up, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's on you. Like, I think that's one way to build confidence. And I think another way is just being prepared. That yes, <laughs> pre- yeah. preparation. I may not know, but the fear of failure sometimes motivates me to be like, oh my gosh. It, and it helps me feel more confident. So even if things fall out of line, you still are so prepared that you can adjust kind of on the fly. Preparation, I would say, is one of the best ways to build confidence. You can't control how you feel. It's okay how you feel. If you feel scared, mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with it. I love how you talked about the lineup. So what are we doing uh, first five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes into our lesson? Being prepared, having backup plans, just like contingency plans, like you mentioned, just in case tech doesn't work because, you know, technology is great until it stops working. Yes. Um, what's our backup plan? What's going to happen if we have students who are done early, students that are turning in late work, students that need more time? Yes. It's all about being flexible, too, you know, and how having that built into our system um, of accountability and show it. I love how you talk about showing up, be authentically you. No one can be the teacher that you are. Only you can be that, that teacher that the students need. Yeah. Absolutely. So true. Now, Andrea, you have lots of passions. You have passions for math, passion for new educators and passion for consulting. How did your journey help guide you to find those passions? Well, be clear. I mean, I, I majored in, in in computer information systems because I said I didn't want to talk to people. I used to be an extreme introvert. But when I got to college, they're like, oh, you're the point guard. You're going to have to run your mouth. I'm going to need you to tell people what to do. And I guess it's just translated over to other areas of my life. <laughs> I think <know>? so. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But so I, I think that when I got into teaching, like I said, I was just trying to get a check. But I think uh, underneath the surface of all of that is efficacy and relationship. Mm-hmm. And I think that often the thing that we're the most challenged with ourselves becomes our purpose and our passion. You want to help others do it. Like, even though I'm like, dang, you wrote a book. Yeah, I still have that little voice in my head. It's like, what are you doing? I doubt, like, I often doubt whether I can do it or not. But I sometimes I take the step anyway you know and so I think that that kind of that's where my passion underlies like with everything like math it's still about efficacy it's still about seeing people believe in their own ability by overcoming challenging things like I was a point guard I was short they said I shouldn't even got there they said I was too short I couldn't shoot you were not playing division one I was like oh okay (laughs) really I'm gonna do it you know (laughs) yes so even as a math coach I was a stalker they told me no several times. They were like, no, you're not ready for this. I was like, oh, okay, and I'm going to keep calling because I think I can do this. And so mm-hmm. I've, I've had several of those opportunities, kind of like that underdog mentality. Yes. And I think that's what's kind of been my motivator in terms of self-efficacy. But the relational piece is personally and professionally, I've had some challenges there. And that is, it's just, it's something I'm fascinated by because I'm actually, when I'm teaching others, I'm teaching myself. I love that. When you're teaching others, you're teaching yourself. And I think that can translate into all different areas areas of our life, whether it's professional and personal, and just having our own personal growth as well. Right. Now, this this podcast is going to drop on the day that your book launches. Would you mind sharing all about the Rookies Playbook and share about the inspiration behind it, what we can find in it, and you also have webinar series that are coming out to go alongside the book, but they aren't con- that it isn't content that's in the book. It's extra stuff. So yeah. make sure you share about that too. The Rookies Playbook, the whole premise is like, obviously, you're a new teacher you're a rookie and my background has been like sports right like that's kind of been my jam I kind of been doing this since I was like five so I I took some of the ideas of teaching and I translated it over into a book because people would be like oh what should I do to and I just had these like random analogies like one of the things (laughs) like checks for understanding are the kids in the car like (laughs) so so some of the things that I um that I like put in the book are just like different, different analogies of sports. Like I I talk about like even the idea of teaching is a, is a four quarter game. You know what I mean? Like the first part of the year, it requires something different. The second quarter and that after that semester break, it's you are showing up as a different person, just like in a basketball game, you play that game very differently depending on the quarter that you're in. So using some of those analogies and then it's kind of, this is how I look quarantine 15. It's three things that are essential to be in great, like have great health, right? Like you have a diet, 
you have, you, you know, you have to have the right foods, you have to exercise, and you also have to have the right mindset. Mm-hmm. Teaching to me is analogous to fitness because the diet is is relative to instruction. You know, like it's it's actually like seven. What it say? Seventy to eighty percent of our health is based on the foods we put in our body, and instruction is is that important. Often, I right. find in schools, people are like, "Oh my gosh, all the data." Okay. How do we teach it, though? So when I say diet, I'm like, oh, I'm going to help you develop a a strong instructional sandwich. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, did you meal prep? Did you prepare your lesson before you walked in there? And some of those analogies and then the exercises, like the tactical pieces, like the data, your classroom management, what's your run of show? What are your time stamps? Oh, contingency plans. What happens? when they don't have a pencil mm-hmm. what are you gonna do like mm-hmm. what are the things that I'm gonna those tactical things and then the last part is the mindsets and that's really like the human things um, how self-aware am I oh wait a minute do I have biases how do I build relationships how do I establish a strong culture so just some of those pieces that's kind of how I look at it and just use some of those analogies in the book of like having a strong instructional sandwich meal prep and then also i have at the close like primetime player i don't know if you've heard of dig by tail he has all these analogies of new players like he calls them diaper dandies like when they're a freshman and they're really good i know and he calls primetime players he's like oh you're a ptp primetime player so like you're really you're, yeah. you're really excellent at what you do but essentially like i call it primetime player pedagogy these are some of the moves that you make to become that elite elite prospect in the classroom so and I will say guys the book is the word I think that best describes this book is real it is so practical real stories real strategies and it's just so down to earth that you know you you should you need to pick it up where can we find it when it launches today mentalfitness.com backslash rookies and that's m-e-n-t-a-l-f-i-t-z-n-e-s-s dot com backslash rookies with an s yes awesome and i'm going to post that in our show notes you guys can just click right to it and add it to your cart so i know that you have some extra stuff that goes along inside the book can you share about uh, your webinars that that you're hosting yeah so each week some of the some of the different strategies, different things in the book. So I think another week we talked about preparing for your opening day speech, you know, like so the four C's, like on the on the webinar, they actually practice their opening speech, nice. got feedback because that first interaction, it is key friends. It is yes. key yes. credibility all day. And just just different concepts like classroom management plans, contingency plans, self-awareness. Like we did a webinar on self-awareness. So they got like a self-awareness reflection tool, different things like that. So all kinds of things, just similar things in the book, but just some things that I'm like, oh, this is new to me. Let me add this in here. But also I like that. Also with the book, it's like some resources <clears throat> on my website that, that go along with it as well. So like a sample opening day speech, different things like that. And where can we sign up to do register for the webinars? Um, you can go to bitbit.ly backslash rookie teacher. Perfect. Excellent. Andrea, thank you so much for your time today. This was so much fun. I enjoyed <laughs> chatting with you and learning more about your passions and just your love for helping new teachers and supporting the Rookies Playbook guys. Go pick it up today. Have a great week and I'll see you guys next week. Remember, you have the edge of magic within you. there you have it edu magicians if you enjoyed this episode please subscribe and share it with your friends for more edu magic check out sfessage.com and follow dr sam on twitter and instagram at sfessage until next time you have the edu magic within you